Kilembe Copper Mine, Kaseze District, Uganda. Well known for past copper mining activities and devastating river Nyamamba floods that originate from the Renzori Mountains. Floods that destroy infrastructure, take lives and change landscapes. Besides the well-known event lies the silent effects of past copper mining activities which threaten human health and livelihoods. Abantu abamuna bari kukira ubwinji ni batandika nkorwe rumushizo amesho gabayero rero bagumani bazimbenda akumarira bazo mu marwariro ngo bakarwara ubune. Azimba zimba rugahwafu. Kilembe catchment is heavily contaminated with copper mine tailings which are sand-like materials that were left behind when rocks were extracted and crushed to extract copper. Several of these tailings are dumped along rivers, on hillsides and tops, close to public places and adjacent homes. These tailings contain toxic metals such as iron, aluminium, copper, cobalt, nickel, zinc, arsenic, and lead. These elements were components in rocks which were crushed to extract copper. Klembe rocks also contain sulfur which oxidizes to form sulfuric acid when mixed with water, making the soils and water sources acidic. All these toxic chemicals end up in agricultural soils and public water sources and in the process are consumed by local people. In one of the community's sensitization meetings, we asked community members who are suffering from ulcers and stomach complications to raise their hands. The numbers were overwhelming. Those who suffer from stomach complications. Yes. <laughs> Those who have ulcers. Cancer is for children. Cancer, ulcers is for children. Ulcers, umberere, umbakuru, umbagurusi, ulcers is for children. Ulcers. We have a problem of cancer and ulcers. At Hamuheru, common disease. Following these health revelations, we set out to assess if the contaminations from past copper mining activities in Kilembe area are responsible for these high cases of ulcers, cancer, and gastrointestinal diseases. But first, we needed to interview local residents to know their lifestyles and diseases that affect them most. Interviews with local people revealed that they collected water from River Nyamwamba, taps, and water wells, sources that are known to be contaminated with mine wastes and with higher levels of iron, aluminium, manganese, copper, cobalt, and arsenic. Elements like iron, copper, and aluminium in drinking water cause stomach complications. If these elements are present in house dusts and are inhaled, they cause lung infections. Exposure to elements like lead and arsenic cause cancer. Interviews with Klembe Mine residents revealed that 55% of residents suffer from ulcers, 20% complained of frequent coughs, 15% often experience stomach pains, while 10% experience hand irritations and skin itching. So we managed to access patient records from two health facilities. These included Kirembe Mines Hospital and Kasese Municipality Health Center 3. These are the facilities serving many of the Kirembe Mine residents. And our target was to find out if the heavy metals and trace elements they have been exposed to are causing lots of healthy impacts. So we went through the records and found that 
many are registering cases of ulcers, cancer, gastrointestinal diseases, and respiratory diseases. And many studies have been done to link elements such as iron and aluminium, copper, cobalt, zinc, to many cases of gastrointestinal and respiratory diseases. Lead and arsenic are highly carcinogenic and could be responsible for many of the cancers experienced in Kirembe mine area. But we also have other elements which originated from the mine west and which people get exposed through house dust, drinking water, locally grown foods, and in their day-to-day -day activities. And these are accumulating within their bodies. Records obtained from Kasese Municipal Health Center 3 one of the public health facilities frequented by Kilembe mine residents showed an increasing trend in cases of respiratory and gastrointestinal diseases treated for all genders and age groups. More females were treated for respiratory and gastrointestinal diseases than males. Records obtained from Kilembe Mines Hospital between 2015 to 2018 provided the dynamics of possible mine waste exposure impacts in the Kalembe catchment. It was clear that more younger children aged between 1 to 17 years were treated for respiratory diseases, both male and female. Gastrointestinal complications were also registered in large numbers in young children closely followed by younger adults aged 18 to 27 years. The declining trends continued with less cases registered for adults above 50 years of age. It was also clearly revealed that more females are treated than males for all mine waste exposure related diseases. The trend observed at Klembe Mines Hospital was again observed at Kasese Municipal Health Center 3 with increasing cases of gastrointestinal and respiratory diseases, but also more females treated for both respiratory and gastrointestinal diseases than males for all groups. In all medical records accessed, more respiratory cases were treated than gastrointestinal cases. Generally, Symptoms of ailments associated with copper mine waste exposures were more common among the age group of 4 years to 59 years. This age group includes children who play in mine tailings, who swim in river Nyamwamba water, adults who cultivate in contaminated soils and work in the mine areas. We also noticed that the mine waste related exposure diseases reduced with increasing age brackets suggesting possible reduced exposures, but also possible reduction of exposed numbers since they are more younger populations than old ones. We investigated other pathways besides drinking water through which Kilembe populations could be exposed to environmental contaminants. This involved collection of vegetables and house dusts, which were tested for presence of toxic heavy metals that can lead to the diseases common in Kilembe mine area. We compared Kilembe area samples with samples collected outside the mining area. Analysis of domestic water samples and then water from public sources revealed that the concentrations of copper, iron, cobalt and the other elements were quite high compared to the other samples that had been collected from outside Klembe Mine Valley. Vegetables from Klembe Mine area had high concentrations of heavy metals such as copper, lead, cobalt, nickel, manganese and many others. The final stage of our investigations involved collection of toenails nails from Klembe Mine volunteers who are already suffering from respiratory diseases, gastrointestinal diseases, and cancer 
to see if they contain more toxic metals compared with toenails from residents outside Kilembe mine area who don't suffer from the diseases of interest. The nails, together with water, vegetables and house dusts, were sent to the University of Nottingham Laboratory in the UK and tested for presence of toxic metals and other elements. Nails are useful in forensic tests because they bind most of the elements consumed by an individual and have historically been used to investigate human poisoning. Yeah, when we compare toenails from Kirembe residents to those nails from people who live outside Kirembe mine area, it was very clear that the concentration of all elements which are toxic were higher in Kirembe residents. We are talking of iron, aluminium, copper, cobalt, zinc, arsenic, lead, manganese. They were quite and significantly higher in Kirembe residents compared to non-residents. Again, this brings us back to exposure through drinking water, dermal or skin contact when bathing, domestic water consumed, and then when you look also at the locally grown foods. And remember these toenails are good at reflecting what we feed on and have been widely used in forensic tests. So this was a real confirmation that compared with non-residents, Kirembe residents are highly exposed to dangerous chemicals. And these chemicals have serious health impacts which have been profiled for a long time. Some Kilembe mine residents had been injured or killed from injuries sustained which exposed them to toxic, acidic and contaminated river Nyamwamba waters. Hatoguroku disaster yokuvanzeria yokuatalejia kabiri yokuvanzeria eh tukaza kuyaba anto mizi bafiri. So so, our investigation reveals that Kilembe mine residents are indeed exposed to waste from past copper mining activities. More than 60% of the local people are experiencing symptoms related to exposures to copper mine wastes and the toxic elements they contain. Young populations appear far more exposed and more affected. All residents in Kilembe mine estate land that is heavily polluted and belonging to Kilembe Mines Limited revealed that they have no alternative livelihoods or settlement options. They couldn't possibly consider relocation to any safer place because they don't have resources. The Kilembe residents appear trapped, only relying on polluted sources of water, relying on locally grown foods in soils which are contaminated with mine wastes, relying on a landscape where copper wastes are more dominating than the soils. You find homes just on top of tailing sites. So with these scenarios, they will continue to get sick unless some remedies found. The good news is not everybody is affected and reducing exposure can mitigate some of those health effects. Floods, tailing chemicals, contaminated water, contaminated foods, and metal-rich house dust continue to endanger the lives of Kilemba residents, with some already dead and others having life-changing injuries or health complications. <laughs> Exposures to several toxic elements in the living environment, even at small doses for a long period of time, through numerous pathways such as food ingestion, drinking water, inhaled particles and dermal contact, 
poses many unknown risks. It will require government intervention to clear Kalembe mine area of the toxic mine tailings located all over the catchment or relocating the affected populations. The poor households inhabiting the mining area have been sensitized about the dangers and many are already aware. But they have limited settlement and livelihood options. For now, the agony, misery and hopelessness goes on. <laughs>